Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and in today's video we're going to take a look at some things coming in War Within, changes to professions, and also some clarifications and some new information about war bands, war bound stuff. Um, so some of this is stuff that was already known, but this profession stuff up over, over there, I've moved my camera to the other side here because all the text on the bottom left. All this stuff over here is new as of today. Um, so, well I guess as of yesterday by the time you're seeing this. Greetings, members of the Artisans Consortium. As we reveal much of the content coming in War Within, we'd like to discuss a new system we're cooking up for professions. Inspiration we added in Dragonflight to try and capture the fantasy of critical hits while crafting. If you weren't quite capped out on your gear and specs, or if you weren't using max quality reagents, Inspiration was a way to get that lucky crit. It could save you money by using lower quality reagents, and you could craft a better item than you would otherwise. That was the hope at least, but it ended up, understandably, becoming a situation where crafters take this luck-based system, tell their customers they would recraft an item in an indeterminate amount of times, and summarily charge a specific price per recraft until their inspiration struck. So we're making changes because there's a lack of decision-making and agency for the crafter, there's a lack of clarity for customers who just want items made, and it's based heavily in RNG, which was never the goal of the profession's revamp, so in War Within, we're removing inspiration, and in its place, we have a new ability for crafters to utilize. Yeah, there were some other problems that they don't really address here, because inherently, inspiration didn't have to be the way that it did in uh, Dragonflight, but the fact that there were most endgame recipes couldn't be rank 5 without an inspiration proc or commitment of illustrious insights, or both in some cases. Uh, well, never both, in, if you had all your points and stuff, but uh, the fact that you often needed the inspiration for those crafts um made it behave differently than if they you know if, if inspiration helped you while you weren't fully you know treed out but then once you had your full tree you could you could make rank five uh, of those powerful pieces those spark crafts that existed so um that was definitely also part of the problem with how they did that but either way they're getting rid of inspiration and in its place we are going to get concentration so concentration is a resource, and you'll have a separate pool of it for each crafting profession. So basically it's like, it'll be like mana or something for a, a given percent profession. It represents your ability to heavily focus on your recipes and exceed your normal capabilities. You choose when you want to concentrate using a button, empowering your next craft. Doing so will cause the craft to automatically reach the next level of quality, no questions asked but it costs you some of your concentration, and the cost is determined by how far away you are from crafting that next quality tier, and it's modified by a few variables such as profession specs, finishing reagents, and whether you're crafting consumables, reagents, or actual equipment. For example, if you're incredibly close to being able to craft a max quality sword, you won't need concentrate. You won't need to use too much concentration to finish that project, but if you're barely able to craft that same sword at quality three, you will likely have to devote most of your concentration to craft it at quality four. For those who want to focus on ingenious breakthroughs when concentrating, we also have a new stat to support your endeavors. This is Ingenuity, which gives you a chance to refund the concentration spent on a craft. The more Ingenuity you have, the higher your chance to get that full refund. Outside of those, concentration will also automatically regenerate over time when you aren't sitting at the cap. Our goal is to provide cat crafters with a more deterministic way to accomplish the original objectives and intent behind inspiration. You can use it to shore up a lack of skill, gear, or max quality reagents while still making higher quality crafts. Maybe you just want to save some money by using lower quality reagents in a craft that you can otherwise guarantee at maximum quality. Either way, we want to give crafters more agency over their crafting, provide more room for decision making in the profession's ecosystem, and provide a resource you can use without having to give your customers a full statistical breakdown. Please note much of the system is currently being implemented and will become available for testing in future builds of the War Within Alpha. Thank you very much. So this is, um, I think, a really clever way of accomplishing this because this does several things that, like, so one of the hugest problems that we had with Inspiration was that if I went and posted a work order for a five-star bracers or whatever, even if you could craft that, but you were relying on Inspiration, you couldn't take that order. You couldn't actually do the craft right because you couldn't guarantee it now instead you're going to get that craft and you're going to have a box you can tick that says use my concentration on this right uh, and then you'll be able to actually make it at the rank five using some or a lot of your concentration um 
a lot of this is going to depend on the exact numbers here, how much concentration you get per day, um, how much of it you need to use on any given craft. But uh, I suspect that, like, for instance, my jewel crafter is like 10 points off of being able to rank five uh, rings, right? Whenever they get sent to uh, it. And sometimes I even get there with, there's a hidden little bonus amount of skill you randomly get sometimes. It's not even inspiration that sometimes is enough to push me over the top and sometimes isn't. Um, so that would cost very little concentration, right? I could probably make as many rings as I wanted to without running out of that. But then if I log on to like my, my leather worker, I haven't put a bunch of points into it uh, and I'm crafting something I don't know anything about, right? Crafting something I haven't put points into, I would have to use a bunch of, of concentration. I'd be able to make like one helmet every day or two or every couple days, depending on what uh, numbers they pick at the highest quality. Um, so in some cases that might be a nerf compared to inspiration, right? Inspiration, you could keep trying and you could in theory... Even if it was a low percent chance, you could you could pump out any amount of five stars and stuff per day. Just a question of how much you were willing to spam that button. Um, but concentration is going to be, I think, a much more... I think this is going to be much more friendly to the crafters and much, much more friendly to the people who need items crafted but who don't understand how crafting works, which is a lot of people, right? That's Those people should be able to go and put up a work order and put up the five-star costs or the five-star requirement and you know, not be whispered by somebody who's like, hey, I can make that for you five star, but you got to take it off of the five star requirement and put it as a four, a four star or something. And then I'll, I'll do it, you know, for 10k or whatever. And you're just like, what? That's a lot of gold. And why do I have to put up the four star and uh, all that stuff? A couple things I'd still like to see them tweak around how that works. I do think that you should be able to get very close to, like, you should need very little concentration once you have perfect profession equipment, which maybe isn't available until the later patches of the expansion. Um, and once you have all of your points invested in the appropriate tree. Um, other stuff with professions that's still on my wish list, I think embellishments, um, especially in this most recent patch, have been pretty uninspired. So hopefully they look at that system and have a rethink about what exactly it's supposed to do and then whether it's actually doing that. I think the closest it came to being like super interesting. Right now there are a couple of cloth and plate wearers that sometimes put on those haste when damaging a new target. Uh, embellishments or killing targets or whatever those those kind of effects which i guess are a little bit cool but for the most part every spec has like locked in embellishments right now um i think that's pretty boring season two there was a little bit of interestingness with uh, whether you should put on a spore cloak or not although the answer was you're supposed to and it just it didn't sim well but it, you were supposed to that would have made your life a lot easier back in that season on pretty much every spec um but yeah i don't know i i, I don't know they haven't said anything about if embellishments are even continuing into war within but I do think that's another thing to look at. And then my final little soapbox thing for professions is I wish they would make nothing like the alchemy heal and movement speed boost when you use a potion because that locks a lot of high-end players into talenting alchemy so that they can get what's effectively the only combat benefit that a profession has besides some of the engineering stuff to reduce backfires on B-Res um, for being a profession rather than just from using those profession items. I think stuff like longer file duration, which by the way, I think it's been announced or data mined that files are 60 minute baseline instead of 30 in War Within. That's that's great. 30 was too short, especially because a lot of dungeons are longer than 30 minute baseline. Um, but like doubling that for alchemists, I think is fine. That's, you know, economics and stuff. I think you could do more cool stuff like that for other professions as well. Uh, I think, you know, if you're a blacksmith right now, you can get a master's hammer and then once you're fully specced into boots, you can then use that to repair your boots for free. I have that on my DK and I, I never remember to use it. It's like, it's hard to, it's just, it's not, I, I doubt that anybody really is actually remembering to repair their stuff with their master's hammer. Um, but what if, for instance, you could just add indestructible to boots once you were fully maxed out in boot crafting as a blacksmith, right? Like to your boots, uh, you could just take any of them and, and, and you know, go to the forge and, uh, maybe use some stuff and then hammer indestructible onto your onto your pieces, right? Like, I think there's room for a lot of cool stuff like that that's like, wow, I got a cool alchemy thing because I'm an alchemist. I got a cool blacksmithing thing because I'm a blacksmith. But getting a movement speed boost and a heal when you drink a potion is... That's like... That's not even that cool, but it's like, oh, well, this just makes my character, you know, better. So I should be that if I'm doing high-end content. That's a little bit of a niche gripe, but... While we're uh, in this alpha phase, I feel like it's a good time to bring those sorts of things up. Uh, okay, 
that's Refreshions. Let's move on to Warbands. So Blizzard have posted a big old post about Warbands. Um, and a lot of this is information that has already been covered, already been released, but some of this is new. Um, so let's go piece by piece here. One of the major undertakings of Warbands is to convert aspects of the great game, which are currently character-specific, to become Warband-wide. This conversion process is being developed to run automatically upon your first login after the pre-patch goes live, so you won't need to log into each character for the conversion. There may be some wait time for the system to process your Warband upon first login, however. It's processing a lot of data, so uh, I expect you're going to log in and like 30 achievements are going to pop that you've, you, know, you have earned by Warband. Uh, rules that you didn't earn on character specific rules potentially um, depending on how much you know progress you've made on those sorts of achievements on your characters once war within launches most new and many dragonflight reputations will become warband reputations when you have a warband reputation any progress you make on one character will be shared with all your characters rewards will also be unlocked for all characters although the form this takes will vary per reward Warband wide rewards will be granted only once, while some rewards will remain character specific and need to be collected on each character. Once a reputation is converted to warband wide, reputation progress will display as the furthest that any character in your account has achieved. If you're at renown 5 for Valdraken on one character and 10 for another, your warband will be 10, which makes sense, right? Uh, and they did that instead of adding them together because you can earn a, a lot of front loaded reputation for doing campaigns and other one shot quests. And they don't want to make it so that if you played a bunch of alts, you would, you know, jump to Renown 30 by not actually having done all that much grinding or weekly quests or anything like that. So they're converting all of the renowned reputations, as well as Rathian, Sibelian, Cobalt Assembly, Artisans Consortium, Azerothian Archives, and Sora Dormi. They're not going to convert Winterpelt Furbold, Glimmerog Racer, due to fantasy of them. Uh, and, you know, there will be other, these are minor reputations that wouldn't be impactful. Warband wide. I think this is a pretty fair thing. They're planning to then go back into older expansions and do the conversion, I think, on a similar basis of like most reps from older expansions are going to be made warband wide. But we're going to make a choice on things like Covenants, like Scryers and Aldor, uh, because they represent per character choices. Um, so that makes sense. I mean, Aldor and Scryer makes perfect sense. Part of Warband reputation implementation is satisfying the goal that players with many alts don't have an intrinsic advantage over those who focus their playtime on a single character. We're introducing a new concept with quest rewards. Players can earn a bonus quest reward for any quest completed for the first time on their Warband. An additional different bonus will be granted for completing the quest additional times. So uh, the first time you complete this quest, right, you get... 2.5k, you get a full renown tier with the Council of Dornagal, and then if you do this on a character again, maybe that is just supplies or something in that slot, or, uh, you know, some other thing that's not rep, because the rep is, they they don't want the best way to get renown 30 with Council of Dornagal to be to do the intro quests on 10 different characters, right? So the intro quest will only give you rep once per account. Uh, makes perfect sense to me. This is very sensible, and hopefully they have found a good way to do that with all the, like, any weekly sources of renown should also be once per warband per week rather than once per character per week. The most common way we anticipate granting this bonus is when rewarding warband reputation. We plan for quests uh, to only give reputation as a first-time completion bonus. On additional completion, you'll earn a bonus currency reward. Yeah, okay, so similar to supplies instead of reputation. Uh, it'll be freely transferable across the warband and used to purchase various warband-level rewards, such as cosmetics, mounts, and pets. Hopefully you can also earn a bunch of this even if you are just a one character gamer uh, as well. And hopefully this isn't a currency that you only get when it replaces rep that you would have earned on your first character. Uh, but since they're comparing it to Dragon Isle Supplies, that was a resource that nobody ever ran out of, right? So uh, that seems fine. With this setup, you can complete quests for any character you want without impacting your reputation or progress. Whichever character completes them first learn their reputation. This also avoids a situation in which a character, a player who plays many characters can rapidly advance over someone who only plays one. They're also getting rid of the human racial because they don't want people to feel compelled to play a specific character or race. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, that makes perfect sense, right? It would be pretty cringe if the start of the expansion was like, okay, everybody log on to your humans so you can get 10% more rep as you do all these first-time completions. Um, achievements are also going to become account-wide. So some achievements are already fully account-wide and progress is shared and completion is shared. Um, there's always been character-specific achievements in which progress and completion is per character, uh, and the rewards are also often character-specific. And then there are some kind of like medium ones, like 
where the completion is account wide, but the progress is character locked as well. Um, and in the past, we've displayed your account wide achievement point total in some places, but your character in other. With the introduction of Warbands, we want all achievements to be considered Warband achievements. You, the player, have accomplished them, so you should not feel like you need to complete them on more than one character, or feel like you do not want to play another character because they're missing achievements. Given this, we're eliminating the concept of character-based achievement score. From now on, a total Warband achievement score will be tracked and displayed instead. It will be the sum of all achievement points, plus the points from any character-specific achievements completed on any character. We're also converting many achievements to be account-wide. In fact, we'll be converting approximately 2,000 achievements from all expansions. The philosophy we're following is that if an achievement has the possibility of sharing progress across characters, for example, do X things, we want to convert it so all characters can share progress on them. It shouldn't matter whether you return 50 flags as a defender in Warsong Gulch on a single character, or whether you like PvPing it on 10 characters and did it five times on each. There are a few rare exceptions to this, specifically for achievements where doing the activity on one character is part of what makes it hard or interesting, such as Insane in the Membrane, which you know requires you to get Honored with Bloodsail Buccaneers, Exalted with Booty Bay, Overlook, Gadget Zan, Ratchet, Darkman Fair, and Ravenholt, and obviously there's a tension between Bloodsail Buccaneers and Booty Bay, right? So um, that makes sense. And we don't want to undermine the accomplishments of players who've completed them this hard way, right? So they're not going to be converting those. Any achievements that would not benefit from shared progression, such as Memories of Teldrassil, which is the doing the special thing on the Fire Act fight, will be left character specific, so you can see what cool things you've done on specific characters for posterity. But again, this will have no impact on your achievement score, rewards, or ability to complete achievements. So basically, these will function exactly like they do right now, where you earn the points, right? Uh, except the points will just be for your account. But then you can mouse over it on a certain character, and it'll be like, oh, you completed this character on your druid, but you haven't completed it on your rogue that you're logged into right now. We are also taking a look at the rewards granted by the achievements. Mostly, we want them to be warband-wide. In many cases, we're making the reward go to the entire warband, such as most titles. In other cases, we're simply converting the entire achievement and its reward to be account-wide. The dungeon achievements, or the dungeon teleports earned by Keystone Hero, will become account-wide both in the achievement and the reward. The primary exception to this is ones that are intrinsically per character, such as Dreaming of Worms, which is the thing that lets you upgrade your crests to Worms crests, uh, of course being something that is inherently related to that character having outgrown the use of Drake's crests. Another exception is achievements that celebrate highly prestigious accomplishments on a specific character, like Gladiator Dragonflight Season 3, uh, whose title and progress will remain character-specific. Here we can also see that Blizzard is confirming that PvP is more prestigious uh, than Keystone Hero, uh, as Ke you know, Keystone Hero is not a prestigious character achievement, uh, but Gladiator is. So this post does confirm that PvP is the more prestigious part of the game than, uh, than M+. To address how we progress for achievements across characters, for most achievements, we're adding all your progress across all your characters. So if you've done 200 personal crafting orders on each of three different characters, the personal crafter achievement will be immediately completed upon login. There are a few achievements where it makes sense only to take the highest value across your characters, such as reach level 70. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny if you logged into a level 30 and a level 40 and you got the reach level 70 achievement. In most cases, these are not being converted as there's no benefit. For the exceptions where there are, we'll use the highest value you've reached on any character. We're also converting flight points to be account-wide. For standard flight points you have yet to learn, you will only have to collect those on one character. Flight points that have uh, already been collected on any character across your account will be unlocked for your warband. Great. Map exploration is an interesting subject to consider as we work through how we wanted warbands to work. Initially, a plan was in place to convert map exploration to something account-wide, after further reflection, we decided it was better to preserve map exploration as it is. Not only can it be fun to reveal new parts of the map, but it also provides experience and can help you keep track of the areas you've already explored. For those who may not be as interested in re-exploring every map on all your characters, we're adding the Warband Map to Everywhere All at Once toy. This is nice. I mean, every expansion has had a, like, a toy you could buy that would give you all the map and the flight paths of that expansion, I think. Uh, I know, because before Dragonflight, I sent all my alts and made sure I'd click through all of them just so I had a full unlock uh, of everything. So I'll probably be using this, but it's nice for people that want to get, you know, the XP and that feeling of exploration. One thing that a lot of games have is there's a lot of fun in, like, a fresh start. And some games don't really give you the option to do a, a fresh start of the game. Uh, and one of the things in WoW that is fun is, yeah, revealing the map and, and getting the XP, so... 
I think it makes sense to have that still be an option. Uh, although there's not like a way to make a new character that's outside of your warband. So some of this stuff is not going to be turn offable. Uh, and you are going to just, you know, and to some extent, if you wanted like a real fresh start character, you would need to make a new account uh, that had a new warband as a result. No currency confusion. Light map exploration, it was decided to handle currency a little differently. Rather than making it fully warband wide, which would create potential confusion, we opted to make it easier to transfer currency between characters in your warband instead. This will help avoid confusion over spending the wrong currency on the wrong character. Instead of relying on buying a special item and mailing it to your alt, you can directly transfer any shareable character from other characters to the one you're currently playing within the currency UI. So for instance, you could transfer Dragon Isle Supplies to your character. And the cool thing here is that you don't need to log on to the character with the supplies and then transfer it to the character that wants to spend them and then log on to that character. You can instead just be on the character that wants the supplies and be like, oh, I don't have enough supplies. Okay, let me yoink some from one of my characters that does. Uh, and you just don't, you don't have to relog or anything like that. So that's nice. Um, I do think for some of these things, they should be account-wide. Like Dragon Isle Supplies in particular to me strikes me as a resource that would just make more sense to be account wide um adding a little bit of friction to it like and then there are some that should just be character specific as well right like some some um some of these currencies like crests or whatever should just be locked to your character those uh, unless they have a philosophy change of course which uh, i don't think they will are i don't i don't think they'll be transferable even through this which makes sense but i'm not sure there should be that many that are transferable that wouldn't just benefit from being account wide or warband wide uh, create potential confusion like, i guess i guess that could happen like i guess you could be like oh i have a lot of supplies so, like let me spend them and then you log on to another character and it's like oh i was spending my account wide supplies now i don't have any on this character is that really something that would happen M maybe um i don't know i guess this transfer solution is fine um you know there's a couple extra clicks to achieve the same thing of being able to buy with your supplies on any character but i do think it at least for me personally i can't see a way that making supplies account wide would have been worse than uh than this currency is intended for purchasing warband wide items such as cosmetics pets and mounts will be usually be completely free to transfer there may be some uh, cases in which currency is earned on a character with the intent that that character will be the primary user, but where we want to allow players to shift any excess currency to an alternate characters. In these cases, there will be a slight loss in the transfer of that currency. This is akin to older currencies in which the value loss was accomplished by an item purchase, such as Cosmic Flux. Uh, there will be many currencies that remain non-transferable because they represent important uh, character-based progression, such as class Crest and the Flight Stone equivalents in War Within. Yeah, so that makes sense. Um, I do think most of the cases where there's a loss of excess currency would instead... The, like, I think this doesn't... I think usually the currencies don't need to have this. I think the currencies that have had a need for this would instead better benefit from just, like, just don't let us transfer it for the first month of a patch and then let us transfer it for free and don't do the, you know, loss on transfer thing. That's that would be what I would do with these, but I mean, this is fine as well. Probably doesn't really matter. And lastly, we'll be taking a pass on older currencies and enabling warband transfer on many where appropriate. Items and gear in your warband. While gear is one of the primary forms of character-specific progression in World of Warcraft, we're adding a variety of improvements to items and gear to make managing and collecting them more convenient and alternate character friendly. The warband bank can be accessed at bankers throughout the game. It will provide up to five tabs with 98 available inventory slots each. Each tab can be purchased for an increasing amount of gold, and they can be customized and organized like Guild Vault tabs. This bank is in addition to your individual character bank vault. Any non-soulbound item can go in the Warband bank. All characters in your Warband can access the bank to freely deposit and withdraw items. The bank will also behave like the Reagent bank, allowing you to craft using reagents from it without having to withdraw them. In addition, the bank will allow you to deposit and manually withdraw gold across your characters in your warband. There is one limitation that's worth noting. Like pet battles, player who play, players who play multiple characters simultaneously on multiple World of Warcraft accounts will find that only the character that logs into the realm first will have access to the warband bank. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Finally, it's worth mentioning we would like to update the UI and functionality of the character bank to also use tabs like the warband bank. This won't be done on launch, but we're planning for it to come soon after. 
and bags will no longer be needed in the character bank afterwards. It's intended this change won't alter the number of slots currently available in your bank. It will just shift those slots from bags from bags to tabs. Also makes sense, also will be nice. Um, so this is something that the actual information on the costs was uh, found by Wowhead here. The last tab costs 2.5 million gold to unlock. That uh, picture will generate a lot of headlines. But the first, you know, four tabs uh, will only run you 626k between them. So, uh, and the first two tabs, which is almost 200 slots in your Warband Bank, is 26k, right? So, um, there's a bit of a gold sink here, especially in that fourth and fifth tab. But uh, this is something that, even without, like, I think most people should be able to get by with those first two tabs, for instance, pretty cheap, uh, and store a bunch of stuff in your Warband Bank. Um, the other thing about the Warband Bank, so depositing and withdrawing gold from it i hope that there are some ways to spend warband bank gold instead of your character's gold especially with stuff like repairs for instance if there was a button that said repair from my war bank instead of from my uh like repair from my war bank repair from my guild bank repair from my own gold um i feel like that would be nice because right now i do feel like it's probably going to be a little bit fiddly all my characters are going i'm going to want to have enough gold that i don't constantly run out from just you know random stuff on it uh, and constantly have to go revisit my bank uh, to, you know, pick some up from my shared account. Um, so hopefully that is possible. Hopefully it's a little, not super fiddly. Even if it is, though, they are going to be adding in any method of accessing your bank can be used to access your war bank. So any banker, Jeeves, Pack Hobgoblin, and if you've unlocked Dynamic Duo at some point or another, so if you've reached max level with two different classes, um, then you'll get the Warbank Distance Inhibitor, which is a mobile Warbank on a three-hour CD that you can summon as well. Um, that's going to be really nice as well. So, yeah, I, I think this is something that could be a little bit less clunky, but more, more or less clunky depending on how they exactly implement it. It's also worth noting in the official preview here, you can see they have over a gold cap in the Warbank 2, which uh, is also nice. That's something that... Uh, for anybody who happens to have that much gold, uh, you can now get over a gold cap put into your war bank rather than having to, say, only put a, a gold cap in there and then store extra gold across a bunch of a bunch of alts and stuff. Pretty niche use case, right? If you're somebody out there who's got more than a, more than a gold cap, that's a very top cut of the uh, of the player base. But uh, it is something that it is information that is available from this picture. So I figured I'd call it out. Warband Until Equipped Gear is a new type of gear binding that we're introducing in War Within. It can be freely traded across your warband, but becomes soulbound once it's equipped by a character. So it's basically BOE gear that you can only send between your account, right? Um, in the past, high-level account-bound gear hasn't been available because it could be used and freely traded across characters, right? It would be too easy to transfer a high item-level account-bound ring between characters if it did not bind... I can hear myself logging out. Yeah, okay, let me log back in. Um... If it did not bind to a character when equipped, players would be tempted to trade between all their alternate characters depending on who they were playing. This isn't the type of gameplay we want to encourage or support. That makes sense. With the introduction of Warbound until equipped, W-U-E. Okay, I I get it. I, I get that that is the acronym that makes sense from this, but it looks wrong. I, it's It looks wrong. I might get over that at some point, but as of right now, this was jarring to me to read this acronym. This should be an O. I don't know what to tell you. If it's about gear, the middle uncapitalized letter should be an O. I get why it's a U, but I'm not happy about it. We're excited to start providing this much higher item level gear in a, a more often in a manageable and beneficial way. We're still working out more of the design details, but the current plan is to have woo gear available <laughs> within raids, dungeons, and delves. Whenever you earn loot, you'll have a small bonus chance to gain an additional piece of Woo gear as personal loot. And that's good, actually. It's good that it's called Woo gear, because you'll be like, Woo, whenever you get it, right? That actually makes sense. I'm coming around. I'm heating, I'm warming up on the Woo gear. Um, but yeah, as personal loot, which makes a lot of sense, right? It would kind of suck if you kill a boss and then some warbound piece of gear drops and your tyrannical guild master is like, Ooh, cool, that's for my new alt. And you never get any of that yourself. So uh, personal gear, personal loot probably untradeable woo gear uh, will come from that as a result. And I think that makes sense uh, to protect people from this having like a pressure of trading it, given that it is just for your alts. Uh, 
This gear will be at least one lower tier than other loot from that source. So for instance, if you're doing content that gives you hero track gear, you will instead get champion track woo gear if you ever if you get any woo gear from that. Uh, and it could be gear usable by any class. Simply by playing, you'll occasionally collect gear a single tier lower than your current gear, which could be sent to help an alternate character or even to use for a new class you've been meaning to try. You will occasionally stumble upon woo gear <laughs> elsewhere while playing, so keep a lookout. And they also mentioned in one of the uh, Q&A things that uh, we got to do during the alpha NDA time uh, that there was going to be a currency as well that could be used to purchase some woo gear. So very, very cool system. Uh, I love the idea of getting not bis gear, but good starter gear from playing one character that you can then send to other characters within your warband, uh, make it so that they have a little bit of an easier time getting started, and you're not wearing auction house greens while your friends carry you through a plus 20 and make fun of you, um, which is something that I, I'll miss doing that a couple times per season, I guess. Maybe I'll still do it for fun, just to give everybody a little bit of a taste of the old times, and they'll yell at me and be like, don't you have some warband gear you could put on? And I'll be like, ah, I use that on my other character. It's, uh, it's, it's soulbound now, I can't. There's also transmog. So collecting transmog has been something that has required players to run to play in gear runs on a per armor type basis, even though item appearances are shared across the account. With the introduction of warbands, we want to make collecting appearances more warband centric to help players continue to expand their collections and style their alts however they want. In the War Within, any character can collect any item appearance, regardless of if they can equip the item or not. Class-specific appearances are an exception and will still be collectible only by that specific class. Most class-specific items can only be collected through a set-piece token, and others are often acquirable by that specific class anyway. Overall, it's intended this restriction has little influence on your ability to collect the majority of transmogs you want for your warband. I think this is a mistake. I understand why they're doing it. I understand that it would require a lot of work to go back and change this, but I think this does kind of directly contradict the stated goal here of being able to go and do a transmog run on any character. Um, Cause like, I think it would be really good if you could go back, do a transmog run on your DH and get some play, like get some paladin tier gear and be like, cool, I got this paladin tier gear for my paladin to wear in the same way that now you'll be able to get some plate to drop me and be like, oh cool, I got some plate gear that I can put on my plate wearers, right? Almost inherently, like if you're getting gear, if getting gear for other armor types is something that's cool. Those other armor types are by definition other classes than what you're currently playing, and I think it would make it makes sense to be able to earn those class specific appearances as well. I understand that would require some re-engineering here. I I think it would probably require going back to how all of the old set pieces worked and changing how they dropped in legacy content uh, so that like there was a uh, you'd probably have to standardize it between all of the old raids, how those set tokens dropped and uh, you know, maybe you just turn them into appearance granting tokens uh, for certain classes, for certain pieces. I, I can understand how that's a lot of work. Um, and I would understand if they were like, we're working on that and it's not going to be ready for launch. But I do think that is something they should do. Uh, it would make this it would make this match their stated goal more. It's something that upon learning that it didn't work this way, I lost a lot of my excitement about going back and like, you know, now like the, for me, there was a, a big thing that's like, oh, cool. When War Within comes out, I'm going to be able to go back and like do Old War, and it doesn't matter which character I do it on. I don't need to go back and do it on all 13 characters to actually get all the gear from that. Like, if I just run Old War on one character every week for, you know, a few months, I can get all the Old War mog, and that'll be sick, right? And that's just actually not something that they're accomplishing, because there are so many, right? Like, every single ra old raid has five or more class specific appearances now some of them are earnable through offset pieces right like you can earn the same appearances on non-class specific mogs um but not all of them and those are often uh, at, at that point you're often looking for like one uh, specific drop from one specific boss that actually fills any of those given slots which yeah um so yeah i think this is a mistake i i like what they're going to going for here but i think in order to actually accomplish it they need to to rethink this it's important to note these changes only affect your ability to collect appearances, so they're not they're not trying to let you put plate on your priest, right? Obviously. Um, with the change, we also wanted to allow you to view appearances of any character, of any class or race within the appearances UI, so you can see that cool tier that you still need to actually go and play that character to unlock. We're also making it easier to collect appearances from unbound items. You will no longer need to equip the item to add it to your collection. Anytime you destroy an item via disenchanting, deleting, selling, you'll automatically collect the appearance. There's a new flow 
to directly collect the appearance from BOE gear that you cannot equip by converting it to Warbound until equipped instead. Existing gear in your character level bank or bag inventory will automatically be added to your transmog collection when you first log into that character. To account for these changes, we're making a slight adjustment to how rolling works uh, in Raid with Group Loot. Any gear that drops the transmog appearance you haven't collected yet will have the transmog option to roll for it rather than the greed option, and transmog has a higher priority than greed. I think they should get rid of group loot in LFR. I don't think it's doing anything good there. I think it's I think it makes sense uh, to have group loot in like normal and higher where you're making your group, but I don't think it makes sense that if you queue into an LFR as a hunter and you see four other hunters, like your best shot at getting a bow might actually be to just drop, take the deserter queue, and queue up again until you get a, a group without any hunters so that if a bow drops, it's just for you. I feel like that's a very, very cringe incentive and thing that's created by current LFR um, having group loot in it. I don't think it makes sense for that format. I think I think LFR should just go back to personal loot, uh, to be honest as well. But And that would also help with people collecting transmog because right now there's often a clash. Like I've seen a lot of fights in whispers between people who have gotten an item they need for transmog versus an item who a person who's gotten who actually needs that item for character power and the first person's only running the raid because they want the transmog and that's totally valid right that should be totally valid so in my opinion they should make lfr have personal loot and it should be secret if you get any items from lfr bosses it shouldn't put them in the chat it should just give you the item and if you want to tell the raid, like, hey, I got this item, anybody need it, I can trade, then that should be on you. But you shouldn't put it up so that then people start whispering you, like, hey, need, need. You only are using that for transmog? I see you have a better one equipped. You know, all that uh, stuff that happens in there right now. So that's a little side rant that you get for free. Um, but yeah, that's my, that's my take on that. When rolling transmog, any gear that drops can be equipped that can be equipped by your current character will get a higher rolling priority than those rolling with characters you can't equip. So a priest will always beat a warrior when both roll transmog on a cloth gear, but, you know, you, the warrior can now roll transmog on cloth gear, which, you know, make, makes perfect sense. Everyone all together. So this is the character screen. Uh, the character select screen lets you see your entire warband in one list of characters. You'll no longer need to swap between realms to see characters on those other realms. The one exception is if you have multiple WoW subscriptions within one Bnet account, in these cases, you will only see characters on the account you're logged in on, even though all your characters across subscriptions are part of your warband, which is, this is actually important information as well, is that all your characters across multiple Bnet uh, subscriptions are in the same warband, and we'll share that kind of stuff. We also thought it would be fun to see your characters in your warband hanging out together, which is how this one looks here. Uh, and... From the, for the launch of War Within, you'll only be able to assign four characters to this one scene, but they're working on building more scenes for you to collect in the future. That's a that's a home run. That's a slam dunk. They should certainly do that and um, give us scenes to collect from each of the zones for questing through them. Give us scenes to collect for uh, for doing delves, for doing dungeons, for doing raid, for doing M+. I said dungeons and M+, but sure, for both of them. Uh, for arenas, right? All that kind of stuff. Give us some cool... Um, cool loading screens in there, you know, give us a Stormwind one and an Ironforge one and an Orgrimmar one and on a, a Ruins of Theramore one for the uh, the Garrosh enthusiasts out there, Garrosh apologists, all that kind of stuff. Uh, as a final point on the updates to the character screen to make it easier for you to decide which character to play at any moment, we've added a bit more information about each character during character select so you can, I guess, see how much gold a character has, what title, or yeah, what eye level they have. Uh, the realm they're on, where they're logged out in, what their professions are, their M plus rating, their their twos rating. Uh, this is like one of those tooltip add-ons that you know I used to have installed back in TBC, where you'd mouse over somebody, and it would just open like a book of information about that person. Uh, so you get that now on your loading screen as well. The Warband system is an evergreen feature we plan to continue expanding into the future. We look forward to hearing your thoughts and feedback. Happy alting, and we'll see you in Azeroth. So yeah, overall, I mean. Great feature. Everything in here is great. Um, I gave my few nitpicks, my few things that I would still hope to see changed about this. Mostly, actually, the, really just the biggest thing is the the class specific transmog thing. I think is uh, is the only miss in here. Uh, but this is a it's a sweet system. It's going to be huge for anybody who enjoys multiple characters, and it's going to remove a barrier that a lot of people had to enjoying multiple characters. So, uh, fantastic feature. That is all we've learned about it that I can remember to put into this video. Hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.